welcome to today's episode. Today we have a special guest all the way from Mexico. Her name is Katie Horner and I'm going to bring her on right away. Hello, Katie. So good to see you. It's a joy to be here, Lisa. Thank you. You're most welcome. Well, before we get started here and learn all about how you got to do what you're doing today, I just want to share with our listeners that Katie's background is she's an expat. Her and her husband uh, are expats and they moved to Mexico several years ago. And that's a story in and of itself, how all that turned around. I'm not sure she's going to share a bit about that, but they've homeschooled their children and she's a speaker and author and has been really developing her business for the faith-based community. She's a course creator and really her expertise is in helping entrepreneurs, faith-based entrepreneurs to create their course, maybe the first or their next course, and, and also to scale their programs so that they create more sustainable income. So Katie, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure, Lisa. I know you and I have uh, met just recently in the past year or so and uh, have, have done some collaboration together, but I, I wanted to bring you on because my listeners for the show are faith-based and they, you know, at, at various points, they, they want to create a course or turn their message into a course or turn their book into a course. And I thought that you'd be a great person to talk a little bit about, first of all, I want to know how you came to do what you're doing today. I knew from very young that I was going to serve the Lord overseas. I didn't know where that would be, but I had that in that desire in my heart from, from a young child. And so as I got into my high school and college years, I knew that there were many countries in the world that I wouldn't end up being able to get into as a minister or mm. a missionary, but I could go almost anywhere in the world by being a teacher. And so teaching also came naturally to me and uh, I enrolled to study teaching, got a master's degree in teaching and elementary education curriculum development. And um, during that time, I also um, studied Spanish because that was the language that was on hand. And I figured if the Lord sent me somewhere else, the third language had to be easier to learn if you'd learned a second. So um, that in a nutshell is how I ended up um, with a love for other countries. And ultimately, the Lord uh, allowed me to meet my husband and we both came back to Mexico. He had spent his high school years here with his parents mm -hmm. who were missionaries. And uh, so we came back to Mexico as missionaries in uh, 2007, and we had to primarily raise our support from people in the States, like a charity would raise funding for things that they were going to do so that we could live and do the work of the Lord here in Mexico. And a uh, couple of ministry changes over the next few years, and we found ourselves ultimately in southern Mexico, way down near the southern border of Mexico, in a very beautiful location without a ministry and without any income to speak of, and without a work visa and without a credit card, and <laughs> with wow. four small children that we were just beginning to homeschool. And um, the Lord allowed us to create a business that ultimately became two businesses, a, a Mexican business and an, an American consulting business that ha allowed us to create the income that we needed to stay in the country that we loved and continue to minister as the Lord directed, not as man, man superimposed. And so mm -hmm. um, just a lovely story of redemption. And now our business provides more ministry than we can know what to do with that most days. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. And so how many years have you been in Mexico? So 2007, um, I guess uh, that's been about 16. What? I can't do math 15, on stage. 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Because awesome. our, our oldest was a year old when we got here. So. Well, it's interesting. I, I spent many years in ministry as well. And, and we actually went to Mexico. Broke, I was in campus ministry, university, working with university students. So we took several trips down to Mexico because my husband spoke fluent Spanish. And uh, that was one of the things. So love, love Mexico so much. And um, at sometimes in my winters, I wish I was there. <laughs> well, you know, we have an Airbnb space now. So I saw that. <laughs> Definitely have to 
pick you up on that. Well, listen, so this is, and, and I, I, I find it fascinating, this, just how God weaves our lives, our, our story together to bring us to where we are. And, and what you do right now is that I know you focus on course creation or helping faith-based entrepreneurs create their course. Maybe tell a little bit about that. Why, why is this a, a passion for you or, or how did you come to do this specifically? I believe very strongly that if you are still here and breathing, you have a message somebody needs to hear. Mm -hmm. um, God doesn't do anything uh, without a reason, and he doesn't make junk. And so mm -hmm. the, the fact that you're still here, you're still breathing, you're listening to this or watching this wherever you are right now, you have a message somebody needs to hear. Mm -hmm. And I get emotional about it because I believe that to the core of my very being. And yet so many, especially faith-based folks, don't know how to get that message to the world. Mm. Um, they, they, they know that it can make a difference. Um, they've had some experience in sharing the message in small circles, but they don't know how to get it out beyond what they know. Mm. And business is a way that we can do that. And so when you turn your message into a course, you not only multiply your time, you multiply the ability, the availability of resources to mm. come back into you so you can continue to expand that message and reach more and more people for the kingdom. And, um, you know, Jesus stood on a hilltop to get his message across. And right today in, in our modern day terms, the Internet is our hilltop. Right. And so. Yeah. We can get the message out all across the world through the online space. And whether that is a, a program that you record once and are able to sell over and over again, whether that is a program that you deliver with people, you're still mm -hmm. able to impact larger groups online mm -hmm. than you could in a one-to-one -one, come to me in real life kind of setting. And there's the legacy piece, right? Yes. And the things that Jesus did lived beyond him. And mm -hmm. I believe that as, as someone who's created in the image of Christ, our message needs to outlive us. We need to be planning on it outliving us. Yeah. And by creating things like books and courses and programs, that allows that message to continue to live on even after we're gone. Beautiful, beautiful. What do you find are some of the challenges that entrepreneurs have when they come to you in terms of this area? A lot of it is our belief system, to be honest. A lot mm -hmm. of... Uh, the people that I work with are experts in their space. They know they know their stuff backwards and forwards, and they know how to affect change in other people. Um, but they lack the belief hmm. in their God that says this was given to you on purpose. Wow. And they lack the belief that motivates them to action to say, this is not just meant for you. This is meant for more. Yes. And my privilege is to stand in that gap and say, look at what God says about you. Yeah. And look at what God says about the message he's entrusted to you and the business that he's placed in your hands to manage on behalf of him so that we can do more of this stuff in the world. Um, and really to, to help them in, examine their belief system to go back to what does God say about you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. your gifts and your business that he's put in your hands and to allow them to gain their confidence, not from a worldly, um, you know, you can do it mantra, but from a, this is who my God is. And this is what he's given me to do. And that gives me the confidence to go out and make a bigger impact in the world. That is so good. We are so aligned in, in those, in those areas that you're speaking about right now, in terms of just the importance of really tapping into that unique message that God has put in your heart. And I find that, and you might find this with some of your clients as well, is that many faith-based entrepreneurs, women in particular, struggle with, I don't want to draw attention to myself, or I don't feel like they, they, they have this disconnect with being able to promote themselves in some way and how that is not godly. And, uh, and I'm sure that in that mindset shift that you teach your clients is, is it's all about serving. It's all about being faithful with what God has given you. Would you echo that? I, I absolutely would. I, the, the first chapter in, in my book, Faith Like Flamingos is all what? about the flower in my hair and how our first ministry that we were involved with, um, it was basically taught that anything that drew attention to you was ungodly mm. um, because it could distract from the gospel. And so, mm. you know, 
far be it from me to distract from the gospel. That's totally not why I'm here, right? None of us would want to do that. And I, I stuffed the fun loving, color loving personality of me wow. back down into my floor length skirts for those four years. And I complied. Wow. And in, in another phase of my life, when I grabbed a flower in my hair at the last minute to go on screen to teach a class, um, somebody commented, oh, I love your flower, right? And I, it's, over the next few weeks, I just started wearing it a little more often. And the more I wore it, the more the Lord spoke to my heart, mm. they delighted in how I felt wow. when I had that flower in my hair. Mm. And it's become sort of this crowning reminder that the Lord is happy with how he made me. Yeah. He loves that he made me to enjoy bright colors. He loves that he made me to feel pretty with his things around me, right? And you being you does not have to keep you from doing what he's given you to do. Yeah. He created you on purpose with a specific job, with the specific quirks and uniqueness of you so that you can go out and do what you do. Some people would never give me the, you know, the time of day as a business owner because I wear a flower in my hair and they think that might be too childish or too silly or what circus is she from? But there are other people who the Lord has used that flower in my hair to open conversations to give them the gospel just because I showed up with a flower in my hair, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when you are you and you embrace that, the way that the Lord made you with all your quirks and uniqueness, you can, you can walk confidently into what he's calling you to do. And in terms of putting ourselves out there, remember that God made you for this. God yeah. hired you to run this business or to, to do this speaking job or whatever it is that's in your hands to do. Mm -hmm. Um, He's he puts you there on purpose and he doesn't make mistakes. And so if you believe that he's a God that doesn't make mistakes, you've got to be confident in what you've got to work with and be confident that this is what he wants you to put out into the world. That is so beautiful. I know listeners who are hearing this today are just being set free. I could just feel it as you're talking that there is a freedom that's coming in people's minds to to understand how God feels. I love that story. I just love that story. And really, it's 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 when we come to embrace that uniqueness of how God has made us and know that that is actually how he shines through us in a very unique way. The representation of God in us is actually brought to the surface because we own who we are. And I, I think that is such an important message that we each reflect an aspect of the nature of the God that we serve because of who we are and he, how he made us to be. Well, it's, it's so true. And just a, a quick example of that, if I yes. can. Yes, I, have, I have a client who teaches painting classes. She does it in, in real life. She also does it in online, right? And when she teaches her painting class, she has a pattern that you're following. And so everyone's tracing the same pattern onto your board and everyone's following her step by step to paint this, right? And yet every single one of those images, every single one of those paintings turns out different in the end. So and good. that is a picture of how we are all created in the image of God. And yet we each have our own flavor. We're all following his steps. We're all doing exactly what he says step by step, but it all looks just a little bit different. And that's what makes each of our artworks unique I and different that. and valuable. It wouldn't be valuable if they were all carbon copies of that original, but because each one is comes out in the image of the original with your own unique take on it, it increases the value. I love that. That just gave me an idea for an exercise for my clients. <laughs> I love that analogy. Thank you. That's a great example. Well, Katie, let's just switch gears here a little bit because my clients and, and, and most of my listeners are wanting to learn how to become more transformational speakers or just be the speaker that they're called to be and 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 know how how to do that in a way that again is in alignment with their unique personality, their faith, their values. And I just know that for you, you do speaking and I know you have a podcast as well, which I'll tell our listeners about in a few minutes. But I'm wondering if you could share what role do you see speaking play in your business or the success of your business? We are communicating, we are teaching no matter what we're doing. And I mean, on the stage, off the stage, in your home, in your business, in your ministry, you're always communicating. And I think it's hugely important to be a good communicator, 
I think those of us to whom it doesn't come as naturally need to invest in ourselves to get the training to up level those gifts. Um, God has given us a, so many things, so many areas in which we each excel uniquely on our own without a whole lot of effort. And then for others of us, uh, they, we can learn to be better in areas. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I, I've had professional speaking training. I've gone through two or three really high dollar speaking courses, mm -hmm. um, as well as the business trainings and the marketing things and others that I've done. And I think it's hugely important if you're going to be someone who is on a stage on a regular basis, if you're going to be out in front, if you have a, that message that needs to get to the world, I think it's very important that you continue to hone your skills, continue to look for ways to practice. And when I say practice, I'm not talking about imposter syndrome, all right? Because a lot of us think, oh, well, you go to, an, well, let's take the art class that I just used, right? And we want to practice our skills. And so we try to create an artwork that looks just like the teachers mm -hmm. because the teacher is the master. Nobody yells at you for being an imposter. Mm -hmm. Nobody yells at you for copying that teacher. That was the whole point is that you practice what made that teacher good, right? We don't yell at a child playing with her baby doll for being an mm -hmm. imposter. How dare you pretend to be a mom at age three? No, mm -hmm. we know that she's practicing for what God is turning her into, practicing mm -hmm. for who she will become. And I think in our speaking and in our leadership, we need to be practicing those skills. We need to be looking for ways to get more practice in, not because we're trying to you know, fake it till we make it, but because we're practicing for who God is turning us mm -hmm. into, we're practicing for what we're becoming. And I think it's hugely important that we do that and that we get away from this idea of the whole imposter syndrome and come back to the idea of if you're going to master this, you need to practice. Wow. I love that, that just that angle you took on that imposter syndrome. I wasn't expecting expecting to hear what you just said there. I wholeheartedly agree with it, but the approach to practicing in terms of that, people thinking about imposter syndrome, that is brilliant. And I love that because yes, it does mean that you need to hone your skill and, and that requires a discipline. And sometimes you need a model to follow in order to know what I will say is this, we've often heard the phrase practice makes perfect, but actually if you're practicing the wrong habits, it doesn't make perfect. It actually, you're just practicing habits that are not going to serve you well. So you have to see what are the, what are the things I want to practice that are going to help me to become a better speaker, but also so that I can develop habits that are going to serve me, whether it be in right. speaking or whatever it might be. So having a model or someone that you can look to say, I want to learn how to do it like that so that then I can put my own personal exactly. Flair exactly. On and I think <laughs> I think that's important to note too, because even if we're learning from a master, mm -hmm. um, we will never be that person. And mm -hmm. God has not called us to be that person. He's called us to be us. That's why we're unique. That's why we're different. And so there is huge value in learning how to do something. I think of um you know, the one marketer, Ryan Levesque, always talks about follow the Lego instructions until you can do it right and then go back and innovate. Right. Good. And so we need to have a model. We need to have something to follow, to learn. But mm -hmm. then once we've learned part of the mastery process is then appropriating it into your own voice, your own way of doing things based on the principles. The principles don't change based yeah. on the person. Principles yeah. always work. Whether it's business or speaking or anything else, the principles should work regardless. But your technique may change based on your unique abilities and your unique gifts or um, your personalization of the, the different techniques and things will change. And that's what makes you uniquely you. I don't think any of us should strive to be a carbon copy of anybody else out no, there. No. no, you know, practice what they do, take what they do and learn how to do it well and then make it your own. Right. Yes. And and learn how to because that's what's going to set you apart. The world doesn't need a hundred more of what they've got already. They need you because you're different. Exactly. That is so good. It, it, totally. And I, I think you probably see this belief system in the people you work with as well. So, well, you know, there's this number of many course people out there doing offering a course on this same subject. Why would I think that someone's going to buy mine or the same thing with 
when I have people saying, well, there's these people are speaking about this subject. Why would they listen to me? Yeah. But well, and if, you know, <laughs> if we're talking to believers here, you've got to go back to what do you believe? What is mm -hmm. the truth? And the, if you truly believe that God is in control of all, you truly believe that God gave you the desire to do this. And you truly believe that God will fulfill through you what he's called you to do. First Thessalonians 524 says faithful is he that called you who also will do it then you have to believe that there is a reason he put this in your heart to do. I don't mm -hmm. believe in competition. In fact, mm -hmm. I have something that I rehearse to myself every morning just to remind me that I have no competitors. There is no mm -hmm. one in the world who does what I do exactly like I do. And that gives me confidence. It. It gives me confidence that. in my Lord. It gives me confidence in my work and gives me the ability to go into it without fearing what other people are going to say or judge or do. I love that. Can you repeat that? Because I want our listeners to write that down. Yeah. I have no competitors. There is no one in the world who does what I do like I do. Lovely. There's lots Lovely. of other people who do the same things, but yes. there is no one who does it just like you. Exactly. I love it. That is the beauty of, of who we are, especially who we are in God, because now we have the God factor flowing through us that um, brings about that extra, let me just say attraction factor and extra, <laughs> extra ability to impact people in a, a deeper way, but that we are all made in the image of God with uniqueness because God is the only God like him and we are made in his image. We are the only one like him us. I love that. Thank you for that reminder and that great declaration. I'm going to write that down and I'm going to adopt that as well. I love that. I say a similar, but not, I like the way you said it. I'm like, I like that about, I have no competition. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I love that because that, that is a mindset shift that I believe I believe all of us should, but, but it, it is something that really trips up a lot of faith-based people as well. So let me just, in, in closing here, I'd love to get your final thoughts on what is, when you think about speaking and maybe, maybe share an area of your life where you came to understand why you needed to say, invest in your speaking skills. You talked about, you know, taking some courses and so on. Mm -hmm. What difference did it make for you after you had taken that? What, what did you see? And, and this could be both in your mindset, you, whatever it might be, but can you maybe name one or two differences you found that it made for you? I think, well, in speaking and in any other area, um, when you, when you take training specific to something that you need to learn, mm -hmm. there is always an, uh, an aura of confidence that comes because now you're not guessing. Now, you know, now you have the training to go by. You know what works um, either because of the authority from which you learned or because of the experience that that training provided. And so I think for me, after I went through the professional speaker training, not only well, and this was also about the business side of things. So I learned I learned stuff there that really upped my game as well. But I learned to have confidence. I learned what was expected. You know, a lot of us fear things we don't understand. And so if you've mm -hmm. never had professional speaker training, you don't know what is expected on stages, big or small, that that's something that you learn inside of a professional speaker training. You don't know um, sometimes the skill of being able to shorten a really good talk into whatever time you're given, right? Yes. And so those different abilities that allow you to be flexible and to still Pro, uh, provide a service of excellence no matter what situation comes is really, really important. And that comes from training and from the practice, from the experience, right? But but someone who, especially for someone who feels like, well, I don't, maybe I don't have any alphabet soup behind my name. I don't have, you know, maybe I didn't have a college degree or something like that. To go through a speaker training can also give you some credentials that mm -hmm. will help your own confidence and can also open doors in other places as well. And so I think exactly. that those are those are big. Confidence comes from confidence comes from you from your God, comes from your experience, and it comes from hearing other people's experiences. And I believe that when you invest in yourself to improve your speaking skills or your business skills or any other skills, you're able to see God 
boost that confidence through there and and the confidence along with the wisdom and the knowledge and the practical skills that you gain are just hugely hugely valuable beautiful beautiful thank you so much so katie if someone wanted to connect with you i uh, uh what would be the best way for them to do that our podcast airs twice a week at foryoursuccesspodcast.com. We'd love to have you join us over there. And if you have a course and you'd like to improve those sales, you can come find us at mycourseisntselling.com. We'll help you out. Mycourseisntselling.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Katie, for this great time together and sharing your story and your wisdom and then just some of the things that will help our listeners to really walk more confidently in their calling and towards the the area that God has really put in their heart in terms of getting their message out there, letting their voice be heard, but also doing it with a confidence that this is your unique print that God wants you to put on the world. And so thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for being with us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So make sure you go check out Katie's uh, website, her podcast, but also go and listen to some of the episodes that, that she shares about her expertise, as well as some areas where you might want to learn of how to turn your message into a course. Thank you for being with us today. Make sure you look at the show notes down below. And if you do want to take training on how to get your message out there in a way that's clear, concise, and compelling, make sure you sign up for the Breakthrough in 22 speaker training coming up at voiceofwomen.live and check out all the details here. Thanks for being with us.